Welcome to the Strong for Life podcast. I'm your host, Connor O'Shea, and today I'm joined by Mark Tregilgis, or Tregs. So Tregs, thanks for jumping on today. I really appreciate it, mate. Um, uh, it's really, I'm really grateful to you for, for having me on. I was just saying to you off camera how it's normally um, me uh, asking people to go on their podcast, but I'm starting to get a few more requests now. So yeah, it's awesome, mate. Yeah, so why don't we jump straight in? Do you want to tell yeah, people a bit about yourself? Yeah, of course. So um, you can call me Tregs. Everyone calls me Tregs. I don't think I don't even think my mum calls me Mark anymore. So everyone calls me Tregs. So, uh, but I am forty three year old fitness trainer. Um, I've been in the industry now since the age of twenty seven, so fifteen years. Um, started out as a one to one coach. Still do one to one because I love it, but but less of it these days. Uh, came up with a, an idea uh, back in 2011 of uh, setting up a, a boot camp for over 30s men, which I started in Cardiff, which then turned into 30 plus men's fitness, which became a, quite a big, big thing online. Um, and so these days I spend my time um, coaching men online, over 30s men, mainly in their 40s now, to be honest. I do a couple of days one to one. I've got my Coach Treggs boot camp here in Cardiff. And I've also got, I live with my partner. My two sons that are nine and seven, uh, my two dogs and my dad, we live on a farm in South Wales in uh, Sully. And I'm also heavily involved with um, my kids football. So um, I was initially one of those dads on the sideline, which was just like super excited to see their kids playing football and very vocal. And then I was soon tapped up by, by, the, by the guys in charge saying, what do you do for a living, mate? And I was like, oh, I'm a coach. They was like, you need to do your badges. You're going to be, you'd be awesome. And so I then... I was then sort of handed the minis. So I was sort of coaching the under fours, which was, that was very interesting. And now I'm head coach of the under eights and assistant coach of the under tens. And it's brilliant, mate. I absolutely love it. That's awesome, man. And just talking to you now, like you seem like you're absolutely flat out with everything. Yeah. So how do you want to jump into maybe um, time management, getting stuff done? You've been running a successful business for over a decade. You're a busy family man. So how do you make all that work? Oh, <laughs> I've got, um, so yeah, uh, how do I make it all work? So that's really, that's really, really interesting question because, so one of my mottos is I'd always, I'd rather be busy than bored. I'm always busy. Okay. So I'm always tinkering and, um, I've got very understanding misses. So I'm very lucky in that. Um, and I'm sure you're the same as that. I've not worked today in 15 years because this is my absolute passion. And I didn't discover this until I was 27. So it's just like, I was like reborn. So it's, I, genuinely wake up every morning um i can't wait to fire open the laptop or get in the gym and see clients and i always end up busier than i should be like almost like a busy fool um but i'm very lucky in the fact that now with 30 plus men's fitness i've got a partner uh, russ who does all the back uh office stuff so um he he does all the technical stuff you know like, like the payments and getting the websites together and just automating everything and i can just sort of be the front of house and create content and sort of be free to be me and, man and manage uh, the clients. Um, when it comes to my one-to-one, -one, one of the best things that happened for me was a lockdown because pre-lockdown, I was just running around crazy. And I had, um, I had a couple of boot camps running and a girls one as well. Um, and, um, you know, I always just look at the bottom line. I was like, if, if we're making a profit, we're good. But having, having that time, on the lockdown to sit and I actually looked took a deep dive inside my business and I was like oh the boot camps as a standalone aren't working I'm paying coaches here I'm paying venues here um and this is why I'm ending up you know coaching all these days and it was crazy and I was like right okay stop so when we come out of this I'm going to merge the boot camps okay so I'm not going to have as many overheads and also one thing I did one thing I did is I went right Come on, Treggs, you've been doing this a long time now, right? I'm one of those guys I like to please people. People say, can you train me this time? I say, yeah. And then you're like, well, what am I doing? <laughs> Even though I love it. <laughs> so, so what I did is I said to my missus, when, I, when we come out of this, I am never going to start before the kids go to school again. I'm going to do the school run every day. That's a non-negotiable. And I'm not going to work much on a Friday anymore because for some reason, Fridays used to be like my craziest day. So, I, so, the, so the lockdown has helped me with that. So now I do a set sort of three and a half days a week in person and you know yourself being a remote coach you've got your laptop with you you can do your online coaching from anywhere and then obviously I've got dedicated time for the kids football and stuff like that so it does take a lot of management but like I said I've got a I've got a, um, a great business partner with Russ who does all the back office stuff and I've got a couple of great ad hoc coaches that help me run the boot camp so I'm busy but 
I think I've got the balance right now. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I definitely think it attracts a people pleasing type of personality, the fitness industry. So yeah. you, you, you need boundaries like you just outlined and kind of talking about what maybe this is what you just gone through, but over the last 10, 15 years, was there any major failure that you went through that you learned a lot from? Oh, I mean, you know, I've failed loads of times, failed loads of times, but you fail forward. So um, I, I will never, I never give up on anything. I'll never give up on anything. So over the years, I've maybe kind of like recruited coaches because um, was one of my first things I did was I grew the boot camp, you know, turned it into a franchise, which we don't have anymore because it's more online now. But I recruited coaches that were, had come through the kind of online world and then we got them qualified and they went off to be coaches. And in the end, they turned out not to be the right people, you know, or I had people that came in that were close to me and set up a franchise. And then within a year, like rebranded and took clients and things like that. That hurts. OK, mm. but, you know, I, I, I've never been one of those people to sort of dwell. Uh, I, you know, I'll get upset for a little bit and then I'm like, right, let's just crack on. Let's just crack on. So. I, I have a very positive outlook on life. It didn't know it wasn't always that way. It wasn't always that way until I got into self-development uh, in my sort of late twenties. And then I realized that actually, once you change this and, you know, I always use that fail forward, fail forward. So there's been loads of times that, that I failed. Maybe I've picked the wrong people to, to run a boot camp, and you just learn from it. You just move on you just learn from it and you're always growing and you're always becoming more kind of self-aware and, you know, you make better decisions next time. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And talking about mindset stuff, is there anything in particular you do on a daily basis, like routines, morning routines or rituals or any sort of stuff you do to develop your mindset? So um, I'm going to be completely honest with you. Gratitude changed my life. When I read a book called The Secret um, handed to me by my mum back in 2008, it changed everything. Um, and so I always practice gratitude. And it's very for, easy for me to practice gratitude because I fucking love what I do. I really, yeah. really love what I do. Um, I've found it harder um, of late because of what I see going on in the world, which uh, we're, we're not going to try and talk about too much. But I've been very open and honest. And I have been I kind of like I've always been very kind of like I don't watch the news. The news brings you down, la la la, which is true. But then obviously when you see what's going on in the world now, you kind of almost get sucked into it. And that's been that's been very difficult for me. Having said that, with kind of like understanding how the mind works, there are days where I'm like, I can't believe this is going on in the world, but I will get back to gratitude. And I'll always think, right, what can I control? How is this affecting me right now? How is this on my doorstep? You know, how is this affecting my kids experience? And then I try and ground myself and kind of focus on what I'm grateful for and focus on what I can, can, can control because there is that old saying, you know, it's just like you choose your reality, don't you? I think the pandemic is going on for everyone everyone um and that's just how it is we can kick and scream and all, and all that kind of thing and we can disagree with certain things but um at the end of the day it is how how do we want that to affect us how do we choose to react or respond and so uh thankfully because i've kind of got like over a decade of self-development under my belt that has helped me a lot during these recent times yeah for sure and like with um with your clients will say is there any specific so you deal with mostly guys over 30 yeah is there any specific things that come up repeatedly for them kind of common issues that you fi yeah. find them they run into and how time. do you overcome them yeah. everything is when it comes to the, the guys that i work with it's all about time they don't think they've got the time okay um they've i say this every day and every person i speak to um, I see, especially right now, I see people that are going through bereavement, marriage breakups, not seeing their kid. They're so flat out in work. They're so busy. They don't have the time. And it, it, I always say to them, like, if this makes you feel any better, everyone I speak to is going through similar things and it's called life. But I think the, the problem is with most guys that are in their 30s, 40s, 50s is they they are missing what I call the low hanging fruit. They actually think that they need to be beasting themselves, doing burpees, kettlebell swings, interval sprints, because they read it in a magazine or they went on YouTube and looked for like the latest fat burning workout. When actually, you know, just getting them to set a step goal, focus on better sleep, trying to get them hydrated is going to get them a, a better win in the long run. So it's almost kind of like you've got to convince these guys, you know, like I remember trying to sell people on a step goal and they're like, huh? 
And I'm like, trust me, do you know what I mean? And, and this is for me as well. You know, when I come into the industry, if you'd have told me I'd be setting people a step goal, I'd have laughed at you because it was all interval rowing and burpee box jumps. But You mean jump. total steps walked, like, yeah? Yeah, as in steps, yeah. yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Step goal. And um, so a lot of these a lot of these guys are kind of looking in the wrong areas and they're putting these big, oh, I'm going to start training and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to do this every day and this every day. And I'm like, oh, just ease off, dude. Just, just, let's just set a step goal and get moving. Yeah. Yeah. Completely. Something I say to my clients is think about your hell week. So everything's going wrong, you know, literally finances, relationships, the world's burning around you. What can you still show up and do that week? And then Love it. normally it's like, Oh, maybe, maybe three hour sessions. Like, no, no, like two or three, 15 minute sessions realistically. And then we set that as their, as their bottom that they basically adhere to every single week regardless of what's going on in the world mm. and then just i think as you just outlined you know get like getting people to do less and telling them it's okay to do less but teaching them how to never stop is really the key to, to long-term yeah. success absolutely but um i don't know if you've read that uh atomic habits by james clear but yeah, uh, what, yeah, yeah what a great book and you know one of the things he says is um look you know your your results are your are the constant lag of your habits and systems you know most people will maybe like say right i'm gonna do 10k steps but then after two weeks even though they're feeling good from it they haven't seen any significant real change they're like i'll sack that off do that for six months you know do it for six months you know you go to the gym twice a week for two weeks and you don't see any results be, be consistent twice a week for six months and come back and you know so it's it's all about getting these habits and these systems and you're not not throw one of my favorite things to say now is right you know when it comes to your training your diet don't be like a boxer coming out in the first round trying to get a knockout punch because you're going to gas out and then you're going to get fucking put down in the third and you're gone and then you're starting again you know next week yeah yeah for sure and like was this the way you've always coached clients or has your approach changed over the last? Oh my while? gosh, dude, completely changed over the years. So, you know, when I got into the industry, we're talking, oh, I was 2006, I did my PT qualification, 2007, I was coaching. It's been a complete like circle of, of change. Like, you know, when I did my PT diploma, we got taught the bloody food pyramid. Yeah. Like, you know, I was, um, I was getting like school mums on like six portions of carbohydrates a day. They were getting fatter. You know, and then so I was like, well, we're gonna have to like look into this. And but then and then I was like, uh, the gym I was at turned into like a CrossFit facility, and then it went all kind of clean eating and paleo, which you know, I, I talk about this in my book, it's a shameless plug, I'll talk about that later. But yeah. I I got really lean doing CrossFit and paleo, and I was like, wow, it must be because I'm doing CrossFit and because I've I've have less carbs now. When actually I had gone from a a job prior where I was sat down all day driving. I was a self-employed courier for a couple of years and like in and out of garages, getting sandwiches and pasties to simply now being on my feet all day, right? Unbeknown to me, I'm like, that's contributing to, to you know, getting leaner. Mm -hmm. Obviously doing CrossFit, which is a high intensity training and, you know, um, cutting out carbohydrates from my diet, which you don't have to, but cutting out a whole entire macronutrient group is going to put you in a, a calorie deficit. And so I was just like, it's all about CrossFit. It's all about low carbs. It's all about paleo. And then it was like, you know, you can eat as much peanut butter as you want and kind of all that stuff. And um, when I went online, my, my programs were very much clean eating kind of paleo with a cheat day thrown in. All right. And what happened was, is um, like people would have a cheat day and they would go mental and then they couldn't get back to eating clean the next day. And people might sort of execute a 28 day plan they get a great result and then they're like literally it's like a jelly and ice cream fest and they'd be messaging me going tregs when's the next plan when's the next plan and whilst it was great repeat business it didn't fucking feel good good to me at all i was like whoa this is like and i remember when my kids were born we had two kids very quickly so john and elliot are nine and seven now but we had them both within like um 16 16 months um, basically I just got carried away on our first date night after John finally slept through. And then, then that was how Elliot was conceived. And I had, we went through three years of no sleep, hospital visits, kids were in out for all sorts of things. And I'm trying to be this clean eater, this paleo eater. And I was just fucking failing. And I'm promoting this clean eating message. And I'm like head first in like fucking cheese and biscuits and beers. And in the end I had to stop and go like, fuck, like, 
now I've got two young kids, I realize how unsustainable this is. Mm -hmm. And then to cut a very long story short, that was kind of around the time there was an emergence of flexible dieting. And there was like, you know, your trackers and your my fitness pal. And, you know, like I said, to cut a long story short, I started to look at that. And there was a lot of resistance from me at first. I was thinking, I'm promoting clean eating, I'm promoting paleo. But, you know, actually, this flexible dieting is allowing me to, you know, have a have a pack of discos and you know fucking still be within my calories and I learned a whole new way but then when I was I had accepted it but then when I was coming out and telling my clients they were like oh no oh and so I had to slowly filter it into my plans so when around about 2016 you know I said to clients right when you come into my plan now option one is you can stick to the paleo clean eating option two is we'll show you how to track your calories We'll show you how to track your calories mm -hmm. and so we phased it in we phased it in the lads kind of bought into it there was less there was more resistance from the women but over time we phased it in and you know obviously that's what i'm a fan of now is is flexible dieting and and here's here's something which i say a lot when i am when i embrace flexible dieting it made me a cleaner eater because now i was no longer cutting out my favorite food groups in moderation i didn't need to go and binge on them and it's a fucking liberating thing, Connor, when you can, somebody who's had issues with food in the past, uh, when you can, you know, stop and fill your car up with petrol and you go into a garage and you see a packet of salt and vinegar discos, which they're not always in every garage. So if I see a packet, I'm having them. And you can factor that in and go about your day without thinking I've got to go on an epic binge now because I've just fucking had a packet of discos on a Wednesday at 2 p.m. It's very fucking liberating yeah you've touched on some really good points there and like the i think nutrition in particular and i think it'd be nice to dive into kind of tribalism yeah. a bit after this as well but yeah i think eliminating stuff when you get results and then you might think it's the the best thing ever and then obviously you would a really clear experience there of becoming a parent and just it's just mm -hmm. not gonna work like this is no a way. real real world but also looking at things through the lens of values, I think is very interesting. It's something that Josh Hillis talks about a lot. I had him on the podcast a, a few episodes back. And like an example, having ice cream is you can have two very different scenarios having ice cream. You might be stressed out of your head on a Tuesday afternoon and you just dunk your head into a bowl of ice cream and, you know, just to pacify yourself. Mm. And then another example is you're having like a family dinner yeah. and you're enjoying ice cream with your with your mm. partner and with your with your kids and that's it's a completely different experience and you're choosing yeah. that that's a nice way to spend time with people and yes. connect with people yeah yeah and i think then you don't have that guilt and shame like oh that's a bad thing i shouldn't be eating yeah. that bad food and yeah. you know it just gives you more clarity and you can make better decisions moment to moment regardless of what's going on 100 mate 100 yeah i mean i i um i went out last night for um for an Indian, you know, meal with uh, my fellow under eight coaches for, for my local team. And I was really looking forward to it all day, really looking forward to it all day. Now, in the past, if I've had a curry on a Thursday night, you know, we're going back a long time ago now, then, wow, that's it. My diet's ruined for the week. So I'm going to get up Friday, Saturday and Sunday and I'm going to really ruin things. And then on Monday, I'm going to go really clean and not even have any fruit mm. because, you know, it, it's so disordered when you think about it. When yeah. all I did yesterday, because I knew I was going to go out and have a couple of beers and a curry is I merely hit my steps kept my calories very very low trained and then enjoyed it last night and it's just so it's such a better way you know yeah for sure and just w way healthier as well like yeah. long term yeah absolutely but over like the last 15 years for you like different phases come in and out i think the most recent one would be like kind of carnivore vegan maybe in, in, the, in yeah. nutrition how do you navigate that stuff with clients? If clients is bring, are bringing these things to your maybe attention, they see it, they want to do it. Uh, hmm. How do you kind of educate people on that? So I always, I one of the things I always say when it comes to nutritional training is, can you see yourself doing it in a year's time? That that's so. If you can see yourself doing whatever that is, so if you're going to go vegan, you can see yourself doing it in a year's time. Cool, I'm going to help you with that. If you want to do Atkins and you can see yourself doing it in a year's time. Because I've got had clients that have come to me that have done Atkins and done really well, then reintroduce carbs and boom, you know. So I always say, well, what are you going to do if you go on holiday? Are you not going to have? Uh, are you not going to have a burger or a slice of pizza? Or so I always try and get them to think. Right, if you really believe you can sustain this long term, then let's look at it. Let's let's build it a plan. And it's same with training. You know, I had a friend call me up recently and he was like, Trex, Trex, what do you think to Peloton? 
And I was like, what do you mean? What do I think to it? Is it any good? And I was like, well, um, that's the question you need to ask yourself. Is it good for you? And he said, well, what do you mm-hmm. mean? I said, well, look, exercise burns calories. Peloton is um, a, a, mo- a way you can burn calories. There's a good buy-in because you're doing it with other people online. You know, uh, there's a there's a competitive element. I said, but ask yourself this. Can you see yourself doing it in a year's time? Or is it just going to be a couple of grand of it's now a clothes horse? That's what you've, you've got to ask yourself that. So I like to put it back on them. And that, that's that's the questions I asked, bud. Yeah, that's a great question. You're going to be doing it years from now. Let's jump into your book. And do you want to tell people what it's called, where people can get it? And yep. also I'd like you to jump into maybe, was this something that was in the, you've been kind of thinking about for many years or how did you put it together oh. as well? I'd like to know about okay. that. Okay. Yeah. I love talking about it. So I've got a book out. It's only been out a week and it's doing really well already. It's called Keep On Moving. Um, and it's aimed at uh, busy uh, men and women really over the age of 30, 40 and 50. Um, and it's, I, I've got a degree in English and creative writing. So I loved English in school and I did it this, I did a degree in South Wales. That's what brings me here. So in 1997, I went to the University of Glamorgan and my, my, my degree was in English, creative writing, uh, theatre and media. So I've done like, I've always done, I like writing scripts and things like that. But I ended up becoming a, an, an event promoter for many years. And then I had a, a couple of years where I was just a self-employed courier before I had my kind of eureka moment to become a PT. So I've always had that English degree and never really used it, but I've always been quite creative and expressive. And so, so I started writing the book in October 2019. So I had a couple of tough years when the kids were very young. Like I said to you, gain some weight. And one of the worst things for me was, is I'd always been a great long distance runner. So I, pre-kids, you know, just to give you an example, my PB 10K, this is not to impress you, it's just to paint a picture, was like 38 minutes. And my personal best for a half marathon was, was one hour 24. And that was when I was 32, right? Kids come along. Um, we had no sleep for years, gained some weight. They were in that hospital. And what would happen was I was pulling out of these races the day before, right? And it became a little bit of a joke amongst some of the lads in my community. They were like, oh, don't sign up for the Cardiff half. Treggs will drop out and you can have his entry. And, and it hurt. <laughs> it hurt because yeah. I was struggling. And, and it was yeah. like, but it was a good motivation as well. They're only doing it in jest. Yeah. So when the kids started to sleep through, a good couple of years ago now, I was like, right, I'm going to make my comeback. I'm going to make it stronger. But I'm approaching 40 at the time and over 40. So I started to get back involved in a few half marathons, a few races. But I was always sort of doing around a sort of one hour 50, right? So, so, um, and one hour sort of 45, which isn't bad, but, but I knew I could go better. So I earmarked October, 2019, the Cardiff half marathons, my, one of my favorite half marathons, cause it's in the town where I live and I'm going to do it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to try, I set a goal of one hour 37, doing one hour 37 or, or run about time. And I trained really well, got back to run about sort of 83, four kilograms, nice and light for me. And, um, I ran the race of my life. Right? I just, I, I just, I never forget. Right. First couple of miles, my hammies were feeling a little bit tight. I got five miles in, had a bit of a stretch out. And then I was kind of like, I was kind of like, oh, I don't know where to kick on, don't know where to kick on. And there was this point, right? Just got to just over the halfway point. And I had my iPod shuffle in, right? And, and, I, and it was just like an old mix of different random tunes, right? And all of a sudden, James Brown sex machine comes on and it went da, 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 get up uh. and I had these hair stand up on like the back of my neck and I shiver down my spine and I was like Treggs you're not gonna fucking slow down now you're you're, you're not gonna do a hammy now you're eight miles in you're you're you're, you're almost there dude right and and it was one of the most it was it was a day like today it's really sunny it was great and I pushed it pushed it pushed it and a friend of mine's got a picture of me coming over the finish line which I've used as one of my profile pictures from time to time but I did it in one hour 38 17 right now was I disappointed was I fuck because it was like 10 minutes off what I'd been doing previously so how does this relate to the book well that filled me with the confidence then to think I'm back I've had a few tough years now I've got the kids I've got more experience I'm going to start writing this book so I started writing the book in October 2019 and I got to March 2020 and I was actually training for the Manchester Marathon and I just started my taper. I just run 35 kilometers. That was my last run before my taper. And Manchester Marathon was going to be in April. And then boom, pandemic. Okay. So, you know, I had to close down the boot camps, close down my one-to-one, switch everything up online, which was great. But the book got shelved, you know, kids homeschooling, all that kind of stuff, right? And then 
over the course of, yeah, people go, what's up in your book, Trex? What's up in your book? What's up in your book? And I just wasn't doing it because, because what I said. So I got to March of, of kind of this year and um, I was like, I've got, I've got to finish this. And actually the lockdown had been so good for me, just for my training, my sleep, uh, my spirituality, I had so much more time, right? Mm -hmm. And I was in such a good place. I thought I can add more value with this book now, right? But I was like, remember sitting in the window in my dining room trying to write it. The kids are there and it was difficult. So I put a call out on Facebook and I, um, I said, does anyone need help? I'm really struggling. Blah, blah, blah. And the best bit of advice I had, which changed the game, somebody said, dictate it, download a dictation app and walk and talk. And I was like, that's genius. I do that anyway when I'm creating content. I walk ah, and talk. Awesome. So, yeah, so great. one day, so one day I literally packed, it was, a, it was like getting into like April, May packed a, a rucksack and I said to my message right I've downloaded this dictation app I'm going walking all day and I'm basically I walked and I dictated 18,000 words in one day mate and then you can save it and you can email it to yourself obviously all the it needs editing and all that stuff but it just I just spilled my gut and I, I basically did that for a couple of days and it was done That's it was amazing. done and yeah. um, and then I found somebody else. I, I found like a uh, like um, somebody who helps with self publishing. Somebody who's an author and is uh, who helped me bring it to life. So so the book is. It's not. I say this. It's not a training plan. It's not a diet plan. It's not a meal plan. You know, a lot of people know me for kettlebells. It's not got any kettlebell routines in there. It's a mindset book. OK, so I do get into the practicalities of this is how you work out your BMR and your TDEE. And this is your protein requirements. These are your calories. This is how you cycle calories. This is how you borrow calories. This is how you can use intermittent fasting. I get into the black and white. But the first half is all about asking yourself, why am I here? Why do I keep failing? What about my environment? Is that holding me back? Let's look at that. Let's take a deep dive into that. And then I talk about my own battles in the book, you know, how I how I started to develop poor issues with food at the age of nine which I only realized through having CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy, when mm. the kids were young, so struggling, we track back through my life. So it's this whole mindset book to take you to a point where I start giving you the kind of black and white. But I also, I talk in to, I, I, I look at things like facing your fears. I look at things like the law of attraction because those things change my life. And I talk quite deeply about how I almost didn't turn up for my first practical course, um, for becoming a PT because I had such self doubt. I was like, I was 27. I was out of shape. And I thought I'm going to go there. Everyone's going to be 18 and ripped. And, and I, I, and I, and I remember the anxiety kind of was so bad. I was just like, you're just an, an ex nightclub promoter Treggs and this internal dialogue. Mm -hmm. And I describe it in the book. And, and I remember going down to Bristol where the talk course was, it was the middle of summer and it was so hot. And I stayed in a and b and I barely slept. And I remember at five in the morning, like the sun was beaming through and I splashed my face with water. So I had no sleep. Am I going to go? I'm just going to go home. And, and something inside me said, Treg, you've got to go. And I remember walking to the course that morning and I was thinking everyone's going to be ripped. Everyone's going to be younger. Everyone's gonna be younger. And I remember this huge giant of a man walked out in front of me with a rucksack on a massive pair of calves. Big guy, like a big guy. And, and I thought, well, he's, he's only going one place at this time in the morning. It was like eight o'clock. And I said, oh, excuse me, mate. Are you going to the fitness course? And he turned around and in his big West Country action, he's like, oh, right, my babber. Yeah, I'm going to the fitness course. I'm Daryl. And he shook my hand. And in that moment, all my preconceived anxieties had just disappeared because he was like a rugby prop. He was huge. You know, he's carried a bit of fat. And, mm -hmm. and then we walked in there and I just realized, like, it was all different people. There was people in their 60s, people in their 50s. The course leader was in his 40s. And yeah, there was kids fresh out of college. There was a few bodybuilders, but I remember sat there and it was like 25 of us and all my anxieties went. And I remember getting through that day, like on pure adrenaline, but going back to the B&B &B that night, because it was two, it was a two day course and sleeping right through, getting up the next day, going back to the course, absolutely fucking loving it. And then I drove back to Cardiff that day, knowing that, wow, I faced my fears. And I always say like, like, fitness saved my life changed my life changed my family's life but i didn't even have a family at the time but it's allowed me to give them a good life and if i hadn't made that decision just to fucking push through and face that fear god knows where i would have ended up so i talk about a lot so i say in the book you might have come for fitness and fat loss but you hopefully get a lot more so it's out on amazon now you just search coach Treggs, keep on moving it's out on amazon and uh, if anyone wants to pick it up it's like $4.99 on Kindle, $9.99 on Amazon, and the Audible version will be out very soon as well. 
Fantastic. Yeah, that sounds really interesting, especially what you're saying about the that story about facing your fears as well oh, and the I, way you've could have been very you could have just like skipped it and then yeah. you know gone back to what you were doing and then yeah. look at look at all the stuff you've done, the people you've helped in the last 10, 15 years. So what do you recommend? I, you know, if someone's really struggling with let's just use fitness as an example, like they don't maybe they're self-conscious about going to the gym or going to a boot camp or something like that. You know, saying just go, you know, that doesn't work a lot of the time. Do you have any kind of mindset questions they can ask yeah. themselves or yeah. anything they can do to to take away uh, from the podcast? So start with why. You know, I always I always say, you know, motivation is going to get you started. So, for example, we're, you know, we're a couple of weeks away from January. People are going to be, you know, waking up on January the 1st, full of self-hate, full of hate. You know, That's it. New year, new me. And they're going to get out there and they, they're motivated. And then they realize after a week that fucking hell, we're still in a pandemic. It's dark and skin. It's all these kind of things. And people seem to think that like with the turn of the new year, everything's different. It's not, it's not. So you've got, <laughs> yeah. your motivation is going to run out. It's going to be worse on January the 1st because Christmas is gone. You And you sat there. I always say this, right? It's, it's so easy on the 28th of December when you sat there in front of your fire and there's Christmas movies on and you're finishing off the cheese and the red wine and you go in the new year, it's a new me and I'm going to do this. And then you wake up on the 1st of January and you're hung over and it's dark and we're still in a pandemic and all that. And you realize how hard it is. So the first thing you need to do is understand motivation is going to get you started and it's going to go. It could even be gone bef before the end of the week in January. So you have to start with why, 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 why is it important to me? I want to lose 20 pounds. Why do you want to lose 20 pounds? Oh, because I'm carrying too much timber. Yeah, but why, what, why, is, why does that bother you that I carry too much timber? Oh, well, um, I can't fit in into any of my clothes. Why is that important? Oh, because, um, you know, I don't want to go out. Oh, you don't want to go out and socialize because you're 20 pounds so it's not your 20 pounds always weight. you feel like shit when you go out right okay carry on what else why is it well i got out of breath the other day going up the stairs chasing after one of my kids and and i and i really panicked oh so you're worried about mortality right now we're going somewhere you're embarrassed to go out in public because none of your clothes fit and also you're mm -hmm. worried about having a heart attack right so keep going keep and i just keep keep peeling the onion start with why if your why is big enough you're going to find a way and that's the mindset uh, thing I would say, but also I would say is you don't need a gym and you don't need to go to a boot camp. Literally start with pick two things. If that's drinking two liters of water a day and setting a step goal, people say, How many steps should I do? Well, take a look at what your seven day average was for the last, you know, three to four weeks. If you've got a tracker, if you don't, I recommend you get one. Um, and then try and raise the bar slowly. I, I read a great quote recently, I saw a great video from Jordan Peterson, and he was mm -hmm. asked, he wrote a great book called 12 rules for life. And he was asked, why do people fail? And he said, they set the bar too high. And I fucking love that because most people will go from nothing and they want to go to the gym four times a week. And then they fail and they, and they, 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 they Oh, I've, I can't do it. I'm going to do 15,000 steps a day. And then they, they don't hit it. And they're like, they're a failure. Set the bar lower. Look at what you've done. Look at what you've done for the last month. Step wise. You're only doing 3000 steps a day. Cool. Let's do 5,000. Let's do 5,000 for the first week in January, then reevaluate. Then let's go to six. Mm -hmm. By the end of January, you could do an 8,000 steps a day and it's a new habit. Yeah. Yeah. The really unsexy stuff. That's the, yep. the way to go. It's actually, you know, yeah, Dan yeah. John. Yeah. Yeah. He, he had an article a few years ago around, you know, new year. And he was saying your new year's resolution should be not to gain, to be the same weight this time next year, or to be no more than one pound heavier, which is like, Hello? That's yeah. great. You know, most yeah. people's issue is they gain like a few pounds every year and then they're 20 pounds overweight in five yeah. or 10 years, you know, so. Love that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's uh, switch gears into some rapid fire questions now. Okay. So yeah. who would be your ideal dinner, dinner date? Or can they, is it past present or? Yeah. Can, can be deceased already. So anyone. It would have to be Eric the King, mate. Eric Cantona. Oh, okay. I'm a big Man United fan, and that guy, that guy changed. Uh, he changed my life as I was growing up as a Man U fan. So definitely, Eric the King, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was a legend when I was growing up as well. Uh, okay, what are you most grateful for? Oh, three things: health, fitness, family. Awesome. If you could wake up tomorrow with a superpower, what would it be? Ooh, superpower. Oh gosh. Uh, the ability for people to to give people the ability to wake up and see all the evil that is going on in the world. Okay, 
Yeah. Mm. All right. Next one. What's your greatest accomplishment to date? Uh, my family. Awesome. 100%. Next is books. I know one you're definitely going to recommend. Yeah. But what book do you gift the most? Or maybe you want to give a like a fitness related book and then some other book that you'd recommend people to read. So first off, without a doubt, read The Secret by Rhonda Byrne. It'll teach you about the law of attraction and gratitude and it'll change your life. I've got, I've got, just got to tap on this a little bit more because, you know, I rejected it initially. I listened to the audio and I was like, what is this crap? And then yeah. I realized that my life was shit at the time and I had nothing to lose. So I went back to it and then I started to, and I put this in a book and I started to practice it. And I was like, right, your life's shit. You hate life, but let's focus on what you're grateful for. And just starting with gratitude changed my life. Then when I started to give, give more, whether that was appreciation or I would tip, things started to come back to me. The more you give, the more you get back. The more you give that. Um, and be grateful, the more you get back, okay? So that book will change your life. I'm just a kid from Gloucester who um, who set up a, a great online fitness business, which I love and adore. Nobody give me permission to do that, okay? If I can do it, so can anyone else. So read that book. And even if you laugh at it first, go back to it and start start with gratitude. So that would be... Um, <clears throat> that would be um, Oh, the mindset book. Um, I love Aunt Middleton. I'm a big fan of Aunt Middleton. And um, the uh, the fear bubble was huge for me. I really like that. I don't know if you've read the fear bubble by no. Aunt Middleton. So basically <clears throat> what he does is he says that most people are apps, they get absolutely overwhelmed and they get frozen by their own fears because they they are looking at this the whole the whole spectrum. So I'll give you an example. So he said whenever he used to go away on important missions, the minute he would kiss his wife and his kids goodbye to get in a taxi, he'd start getting anxiety. And he said it would cripple him all the way. You know, he'd be on the flight over to Afghanistan. He'd be crippled with this anxiety, but he may not even be going into combat for a month, you know. And so what he sort of sat and talked to himself was actually, why am I letting this fear and this anxiety overwhelm me now when actually, you know, that the actual danger I'm going to be in, it isn't here in the, in the present. The danger is going to be for maybe, you know, a couple of minutes out, out in combat and I'll address that then. So he created this whole kind of fear bubble, which allow him to understand that at certain points, boom, he's going to be in that fear bubble and he needs to manage that there. But for the rest of the time, he's not. And if you look at it with, with my course, I had this whole fucking fear, this whole, oh my gosh, I'm not good enough. When actually the only moment I should have been scared and I shouldn't really have been was when I stepped into that room. And once I got into that room, all my fears went away. And so I actually used this uh, last, last, uh, last New Year's Eve. I'm not a massive fan of New Year's Eve. I used to be a, I used to be a nightclub promoter. So I was up late all, for all those years. So I'm very much now feet up and have a chill. Well, last year I wanted to do something. I wanted to do something for charity. And last year, I because I was going to do the Manchester Marathon, and I was then going to do a triathlon and everything got cancelled. I was like, right, I'm going to go out on New Year's Eve in the dark to the local lakes with a head torch and all my gear. I'm going to run a marathon and then I'm going to jump on my mountain bike and I'm going to cycle for the rest. It's going to be an eight hour event. And I'm going to raise money for the trust or trust. So I will, I'll go over to the local fields, took my car, my supplies, a bike started at um, 11 o'clock. And I knew that I was running 44 laps of this local lake and that would be the marathon. Okay. And that would take me four hours. Right. Okay. Now I didn't think, fuck, you'll be running over there like 12, you know, till four in the dark, you know, 44 laps. All I did is I go, right, one lap at a time. That's all mm. I'm going to do. So break it down. And that's what Ahmed said, break it down brick by brick. So each time, just one lap, just one lap, just one lap, just one lap, just one lap. And I repeated it 44 times. And then the next thing you know, I'm on my bike and I'm cycling around. And the next thing you know, it's eight in the morning and i got a mate to bring me a bacon sandwich. But I just <laughs> that's awesome, that. man. I just used that. I just used that. I didn't look at the whole thing. So like, I'm just going to break this down. I know this course. And actually what ended up, Connor, is a, it was a full moon that night. So I actually, I could see and I took off my head torch. It was fucking brilliant. That's awesome. So yeah, man. The Secret well for Mindset and The yeah. Fear Bubble by Aunt Middleton, two books I'd highly recommend. Fantastic. Great answer. All right, last question. If you could put something on a billboard in Times Square or something where millions of people will see it, what would you put down? Health is wealth. Very health good. is well yeah health yeah. is your responsibility nobody else's yeah good stuff mate so i think that's a good place to finish today's podcast do you want to tell people where they can find out more about you where they can yep. uh, maybe remind them where they can get the book again 
Brilliant. Mate, I really appreciate this. Okay. So you find me on Facebook, Mark Tregilgas. If you give me a friend request, follow me 30 plus men's fitness. Again, you'll find me on Instagram, 30 plus men's fitness. Um, you'll find my YouTube channel is youtube.com forward slash 30 plus men's fitness. And you can pick up a copy of my book on Amazon. Just type in Kelch Treggs, keep on moving. And um, there's a little stocking filler uh, for, for you if you if you like my message. Great stuff. I'll make sure and link all that in the show notes as well. Okay. Amazing. Matt, I really appreciate you having me on. It's been great. It's really, really enjoyable. Thank you so much. My pleasure, mate.